Hi guys, it's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. It's December, which seems utterly ridiculous, but it also means it's almost time for Christmas, which also means that I am doing a video about Christmas recommendations, um, specifically relating to books, since that's what I talk about on my channel. Giving recommendations is a little bit tricky if you don't know the person you are recommending to, so um, a lot of the recommendations are fairly general that I'm giving, but obviously a lot of them will be tailored to my own um, interest and uh, preference in books, uh, so obviously keep that in mind. But I'm going to be talking about a mixture of new releases that, are, that came out in 2018, non-fiction books, uh, and then some more sort of general lifestyle cookery um, type of books. And also, just as a heads up, I will be doing another video in the next week or two um, recommending books to read around the Christmas period. So not necessarily ones to give as gifts, but uh, ones that get you into the Christmas spirit. So if you notice that most of these books aren't particularly Christmassy, that will be why. Um, I feel like Christmassy books are best read in the run-up to Christmas to get you in the mood and get you excited for it. So firstly, I want to give some general recommendations for people that are... So first I want to give some general recommendations for people you want to buy a bookish gift for who are already book lovers. And sometimes these can actually be the hardest people to choose um, bookish gifts for because you're worried that they will already have read any book that you could possibly give them. So I would suggest, I mean, either getting a nice edition of a book that you know they really love and there's plenty of editions that you can get in sort of normal bookshops uh, like Penguin Clothbound Classics or Penguin English Library editions um, but also I think the um, the Folio Society do really stunning editions of all the popular classics and they also do some some newer books uh, and some new like original uh, fiction and non-fiction as well. I don't have an example to show you because generally they're they are um, books that are good to give as gifts because they are more expensive. Um, I'd say the sort of starting price is probably £30. Uh, they're all really lovely hardbacks but they're generally absolutely beautifully produced in a way that you would never usually find just going into a Waterstones. Um, so it is like an extra special gift if you know someone absolutely loves um, Wuthering Heights or something you can get you can get them a, a very special edition of that book. Slightly similar is Phaedon, which are a publisher that um, they don't do so much um, sort of rebinding of classics, but they produce new uh, releases of sort of arts and lifestyle books. Um, so they're, they're specifically publishing creative arts books. So generally things like art and architecture, food, travel, design, um, lifestyle, that kind of thing. They also do collections that are along a theme or a colour or, um, you know, to do with a specific genre if you want to spend a bit more on someone and give them a lovely selection of books that are the kind that are absolutely beautiful on your bookshelf but also obviously contain really interesting or exciting information. I think you can get some fade on books in the sort of art section of larger bookshops but they're much less likely than um, most of the standard publishers again because they're generally a little bit more on the expensive side um, but especially if you know someone who is really into cooking for example then this is a great publisher to look at um, and of course they have a website that you can order from and I will be mentioning two fade on books that I own uh, later in the video when I talk about some cookery books. And if you know someone who really loves books but you are really stumped about what book to get them, I think a good thing to buy is a sort of book related gift, um, some sort of book merchandise. And some publishers, I suppose the biggest one being Penguin, do sell um, specific merchandise related to Penguin books. Faber also do something similar. Um, but something that's not specifically related to a publisher is a website called The Literary Emporium and they sell um, a variety of um, merchandise type products relating to mostly classic books. Uh, things like tote bags, pins, um, bookmarks, prints, jewellery, actually a really wide variety of things um, but they're really really quite beautiful items and, uh, and if you know someone especially who likes classics then I'm sure you'll find something on that website that, that would suit them. And I also want to recommend some new releases, books that came out in 2018 that are really good for people who don't typically buy hardback fiction. Um, I often wait until books come out in paperback myself um, and I know a lot of people obviously do the same because hardbacks are quite expensive. So if you know someone who really likes 
uh, fiction but generally wouldn't sort of splurge out that money then I think getting something that's come out fairly recently is a good shout. Uh, so this is definitely a sneak peek into my favourite books of 2018 which I will be making start of January I presume. Um, so I'll just mention each book quite briefly. And the first one's the only one that I don't actually own because I got it from the library, but it's The Seal Woman's Gift by Sally Magnuson. And this was, for me anyway, surprisingly beautifully written, considering she is by trade a journalist, which is probably an unfair assumption for me to make. Um, but it's based on true history about a fairly large, several hundred Icelanders, who were kidnapped from Iceland in the 1620s and were sold into slavery in Algiers. And this book specifically follows one family who are torn apart by this horrendous event and it follows them trying to readjust to their wildly different lifestyles. It is a pretty heartbreaking book, to be honest, um, but it does have its hope within it too. And um, as with all the books that I will mention in this category, it does have a beautiful cover, it's really beautifully produced, which is definitely a consideration when you're buying a gift for someone. The next one is Circe by Madeline Miller, who also wrote The Song of Achilles, which was wonderful as well. Um, and this one is a retelling of the myth of Circe, which is who is probably best known from her less than flattering portrayal in Homer's The Odyssey. And this book complicates this view of her as a man-hating witch, and um, and it lets you see all facets of her potential personality and, and throughout her life actually. Again this is one that I thought would be quite dry because um, Madeline Miller is an expert in, in this kind of history but she brings it absolutely to life and it is stunningly written as well as stunningly produced so this is one I would highly recommend. Next is Melmoth by Sarah Perry and I really like the blue foiling on this which I think is quite unusual. Um, this is also a retelling, this time of Melmoth the Wanderer by Charles Maturin, but the character of Melmoth, who is a witness who watches over sort of all the pain and suffering of humanity, she, he is recast into a woman in this book. And it is um, actually a very well written book that I think has a very interesting nested narrative structure. Uh, it's not too difficult to read, however and it is absolutely chilling so if that's what you want or what you what you want for your friend or family member over Christmas then I think this is a really great choice. The next one is The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan uh, who is the author of The Grace Keepers and I really like this um, book cover design as well. I love the naked hardback format and this one is about a family who live quite an isolated lifestyle on an island um, and it has elements of magical realism and it has really strong LGBTQ plus representation. I think it's done really well and it's enormously touching. This was, it really blew me away actually. I expected it to be good but I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman is one you've probably heard of. It is a book set in the same world as His Dark Materials but it is set at the time where the main character of that trilogy, Lyra, is just born, although it follows, for the most part, different characters. It is, I just think he is an absolutely genius writer, and this book, I think, is just as well plotted, and it also challenges societal norms just as much as um, the original trilogy, which I was worried it would be maybe toned down for the 21st century, or the sort of 2010s, uh, but, but I really don't think it is. It works really well as a standalone book if you're giving it to someone who hasn't read the original trilogy and you want to get them into it. Um, but I think it has so many throwbacks to the original that it's perfect for people who are already fans of his dark materials. The Mermaid Mrs. Hancock. I have talked about this dozens of times, I think, throughout this year since it first came out in January. This is just a proof. The final cover is more beautiful. Um, it is a beautifully written, sumptuously detailed and descriptive um, story of a man, a Georgian merchant, whose ship is traded for a mummified mermaid and it, the plot uncovers or lays bare lots of elements of this society, particularly in relation to uh, the treatment of women and expectations of their behaviour. It's a book that you don't so much read as consume, it is so delectable in its writing style and it does have a lot of substance as well. 
Now I have a slightly more niche subcategory of books that I want to recommend, which is books for cat lovers, because I feel like there is quite a distinct crossover in the Venn diagram between book lovers and cat lovers, and um, it, it's just really nice to, to, to read about our feline friends around the Christmas period. The first one I want to recommend is A Cat, A Man and Two Women by Junikiro Tanazaki and this one is a really heartwarming tale actually about um, how a cat can become a love rival in a relationship. It is quite humorously and light-heartedly written um, but it, it is quite, it's very charming I feel. Next is Cat Poems by the World's Greatest Poets and this has a really lovely striking cover um, and it is, I think, just great for, for people who are not necessarily that into poetry but they love, they love cats because it's, um, I think it is still very accessible for, for people who wouldn't naturally gravitate towards a poetry collection. The next one is If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura which is about a man who lives with his cat cabbage and discovers he has only months to live. And the last one I want to mention is The Guest Cat by Takasha Hiraide and it is a story of a couple who are living quite unhappily together when a cat decides to move in with them. Um, very charming tale. I also want to give some recommendations for readers of non-fiction which is quite a hard category to pin down because it depends so much on the interest of the person you're buying a book for. Um, so I just want to really talk about a few of the non-fiction books that I've particularly enjoyed over the last year or so that I think have quite universal appeal, so they're not too niche. Woman in Power by Mary Beard has also just come out in paperback, so um, would be great if you wanted to get a sort of slightly cheaper version, um, because it is a very short book. It is um, a really interesting uh, non-fiction book, obviously about feminism through history by the world-class historian Mary Beard and it is very accessible if um, you're giving it to someone who doesn't really know a huge amount about feminism, it's not too didactic and in your face about it, um, but she obviously argues her points incredibly well. And I do think it would be just as appropriate as a gift for a man as for a woman. For fans of mythology there are three books that have come out um, in the last year that I think would be really great gifts. There are two by Stephen Fry, the first one being Mythos, um, which tells is a kind of narrative non-fiction book about Greek mythology from the very beginning of time um, up until sort of some of the more human heroes. He writes in such an engaging and humorous way, if you've read any of his writing you will know the style, um, but it is, it also has a lot of depth and a lot of real substance to it too, um, it has footnotes which really interestingly tell you the etymological origins of a lot of the words, which I found some of the most interesting parts of it. Uh, and then also, just a couple of weeks ago actually, I think, um, his new book Heroes has come out, which is kind of a follow-on from Mythos. It tells about um, Greek heroes, human heroes, through mythology. Uh, so if someone's already read Mythos, I think that's probably a great one to, to buy them for Christmas. Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman is also one I think that's very accessible to people who already have an interest and a knowledge base about Norse mythology but for people like me who didn't so much before reading it, it, it does tell you the basics and I never felt like I was out of the loop reading it. I'm sure it would also be a really great gift for people who had a lot of knowledge about Greek mythology but as a lot of people do don't necessarily know a huge amount about Norse mythology which is really just as fascinating if not a little bit more fragmented. I think Yuval Noah Harari is a really great non-fiction writer for people who have a general interest in the history of humanity and how we are, where we are today, um, but don't necessarily have a huge amount of sort of scientific or historical knowledge in that area already. Uh, that was kind of the position I was in when I listened to the audiobooks for two of his books, Sapiens and Homo Deus. Sapiens is a history of humanity from the earliest people and uh, up until the present day and Homo Deus is looking more into the future about how ecological and technological and other changes might affect where humans are going in the future. It is absolutely fascinating and a little bit scary at points um, and you definitely get a sense of his strong opinions about how we should act differently in those books, which I think he's now translated more into his newest books, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, which I think are taking the ideas, especially of Homo Deus, about how we ought to be living our lives and, um, and setting them out in a slightly shorter format. So 
I think it's good. That book would be a good gift for people who don't necessarily want to read six or eight hundred pages. I'm not sure how long it is because I listened to the audiobook, I can just tell you it's pretty long. But instead want some um, very interesting facts and uh, ideas about what we should be doing in a, in a slightly shorter format. Now I said I would come back to Phaedon because I have two um, cooking or food related books um, by this publisher that I wanted to share because I do think they're really great um, Christmas gifts. The first one is Where Chefs Eat and this is a kind of compendium, it's very long, of places through the world and the best restaurants that are in each of those places. So I think obviously most suited for people who enjoy travelling and enjoy eating great food in those various places. I think it's going to take me my entire lifetime, or probably several lifetimes, to work through all of these and go to the restaurants, but it's a lovely thing also just to have and flick through and find out what the best places to eat are in each place throughout the world. The next Phaedon cookery book that I have is one that is very hard to hold up and is about three times the size of my head, but it's The Silver Spoon, and this is a collection of Italian recipes. It's 1500 pages long, um, and it does have a lot of illustrations inside considering its length. Um, I think it's a little bit disappointing when you get a recipe book and it doesn't have many illustrations because then I feel like I don't know what my food's meant to look like. Uh, but this one is actually fairly comprehensively um, illustrated. This is a book that you could follow a recipe by every day for several years, so I think it's really great for someone who enjoys Italian food. And the RRP for this one is £30, so it is more than a standard recipe book, I think, but for what you get, I think it is very good value for money. Next I have Taste, an infographic book of food, and this isn't a recipe book, but is a sort of fact file, an infographic fact file about uh, food. So um, about flavour profiles and what food goes best with one another, um, about different parts of animals and how you should cook them. Um, and it has a lot of sort of really interesting facts about food that you would be fairly unlikely to come across in a standard recipe book. Um, so this one is, I think, really interesting for people who you're not really, you know they love food, but you're not really sure what cuisines they're specifically into. Lastly, and by far my most used recipe book this year is Simple by Yotam Ottolenghi. And I think it's worth mentioning that the recipes in this book are simple in comparison to Ottolenghi's usual recipes, which are fairly complex. This isn't for the beginner cook, I don't think, um, especially because it contains some ingredients like za'atar and sumac and tahini that you wouldn't find in like a UK supermarket. So it does require slightly more specialist shopping, but for me anyway, it was really worth sort of spending that little bit extra time and money getting these ingredients and using these recipes because for me the results are really worth it because you can take a fairly basic and plain dish up a level where it's much tastier and much imp more impressive as well. It's also a very beautifully illustrated book with lovely photography and very well categorised so it's easy to find your way through it. I find recipe books can be quite overwhelming and daunting sometimes to use because they contain so many recipes, um, but this one is actually an easy, an easy guide so if you know kind of the thing you're wanting that night you can easily find it in this book. So those are all the books I'm going to recommend today as Christmas gifts and I could have mentioned a million more but I've tried to be as restrained as possible. Um, so I hope anyway that you get some recommendations from this and try and let me know if there are any books that you'll be giving as Christmas presents or that you're hoping to receive uh, because that's always a way to add more books to my TBR which I don't need but I definitely want. And as I mentioned, I will be posting a video next week about books to read around the Christmas period, so ones that are a little bit more festive, um, that make you feel in the mood for Christmas. Uh, so I hope you're looking forward to that, I certainly am. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you then. Okay, bye bye!